At Collins Morgan, we offer friendly, regulated and ethical advice for anyone living in Scotland. Over the last six years, we have helped thousands of Scottish residents become debt-free. Our organisation always have your best interests at heart and our advisors are trained to help you in any situation with a range of solutions always available. If you're struggling with debts, act now and call one of our friendly advisors on 0141 218 4450. And we're on. <laughs> and today's guest, we've got Alan Meagy. First of all, Alan, I just want to say thanks for coming on the show and taking the time to actually meet us. Thank you. You're a legend in the music industry. <laughs> Oasis, Primal Scream, all massive names. It's, uh, it's good to have you on, mate. How's Thank things you. been? Yeah, good. Yeah, just like really good. It's a Sunday morning, 10 o'clock in the morning. Interesting time. <laughs> in London, Harley Street. We're doing all right, Alan. I always like to go back to the start with my guests. Obviously, yeah. you've had a great career and you've done massive things, but go back to the start where you grew up and how you get involved in the music industry. Well, I, I was a, I was born in Govan Hill. And at five-year-old, I came up to uh, Mount Florida. And uh, I went to Mount Florida Primary. And that was pretty good. It was actually all right. And then I ended up, uh, I went to King's Park Secondary School. I was just dreadfully, uh, you know, just, I hated school. Do you know what I mean? I was just like, you know, I, I didn't take to it. And uh, I suppose I got my problem with authority and everything you know, at that school. You know, I mean, it was just like, you know, I just, I, I, I mean, not a huge deal, but I just, I just really disliked getting told what to do. And uh, I left school with one O level, which was a, uh, which was a uh, arithmetic. I got a C, but I never, I never tried. I never, I never done anything. And then I ended up having a load of shit jobs. Uh, I worked in a building site. Uh, I made collars in a factory. Do you know what I mean? Um, you know, I, I had about three or four really crap jobs, and then I, um, I, I eventually, I, you know, I, I got a British Rail job you know, issuing bolts, and which was basically it's a job for nothing, but I used to get £75 a week as a kid, I was 16, 17, and, uh, and I'd done that for a couple of years before I came to London. And that's when, because people see the glitz in the glam life, and it is a great life down in London, but it is fucking crazy. Well, it was, he, well. it was he glamorous for me for a long, long time, you know what I mean? I don't think it's ever really been that glamorous, but but I, I came down to London when I was like 19, and I, and I was homeless, essentially. You know, I would have been like, the reason there's so many homeless people, you, me, you and me are both involved in homeless stuff. Um, but when I, when I came down, I, I came off a train, I had like literally five quid in my pocket, but I, I squatted for six months, James. And now nobody's allowed to squat because they basically arrest you if you squat. But that the whole houseless, uh, the homeless problem at the moment, uh, there's about some like 300,000 people homeless. It would be eradicated if you could if you could squat because that's what it was the seventies and eighties squatting culture the clash came out of squatting culture which was Joe Strummer was squatting um, you know and like me and Andrew Ennis, that's the guy in the primals we came out of squatting culture because we both squatted yeah it's crazy because there's millions of empty flats everywhere there's oh, there is. millions of empty units well, a lot of people buy them as investments and don't live in them yeah they don't even live here they are empty and it'd be a good yeah. idea for anybody that's got properties yeah. the line empty just open them up let homeless yeah. people sleep in it yeah. especially the winter time the numbers of the deaths on the street for homelessness yeah. is shocking i remember there was like this winter has been nothing but the winter last year i remember like it was, it was something like about minus 12 or something like that when we were in london and it's like i saw somebody underneath the arches in the embankment and uh, and you know, like, you know, obviously they're no right. You know, what I mean, they're just like we have a little mm -hmm. blanket, and you're just thinking, you know, you should be somewhere warmer, but you know, they're they're, they're not in the zone of trying to look after. Yeah, themselves. it's heartbreaking. You know what I mean? When you first came down to London, what was your plans then? When you had a fiver, what were you? I think I just wanted goal? to be a pop star. It was basic shit, man. You know, I mean, I, I, when I got to about twenty two, I realised I wasn't very good at playing the bass, <laughs> so I stopped and started running. Uh, you know, I started, I started owned, I owned a little club, the living room. But yeah, the initial thing was when I got into music, which was about 10, uh, I was into Bowie and Slade and T-Rex, 
Roxy, you know, all these bands, I'd, I, was, I was obsessed by glam rock. And I started going to the Apollo when I was about 11. That's before your time, James. What age are you, James? Well, I tell that I'm an Elijah Mage, but I'm 35. Right, well, you're, you're <laughs> too young for the Apollo. But we all went to the Apollo, me and Bobby and, you know, Andrew, and we, we, we all we all went to. And I saw the gigs there, like, so amazing, amazing shows there. And I saw the Who at the Glasgow. The Who are great. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. brilliant. Yeah, I saw, I saw everybody. And then, uh, you know, I, I, I got the love of music, got a bass, got, got into punk, uh, you know, I had little punk bands. I then ended, ended up in a Glasgow band for a while just before I came to London, H2O, who only had, had, had a big hit. Uh, and, I, and I moved to London with Andrew. And then we were just, we, we got there. And how we got the squat was there was a girl with pink hair in Clapham. And we went, can you, you know, like, do you know anywhere you can stay? And she went, oh, can you stay at mine? You know, we were like, and, and she was just a punk girl that just, you know, let us into a squat. And that was really the big break for us, was actually getting somewhere we could sleep. Because then we thought, well, we're not going back. Do you know what I mean? It's scary to think that if you never met that girl, you could potentially have been homeless and... Yeah, but to be fair, we would have found something, right? Yeah, but, survivors. Yeah, That's a Glasgow but, mentality. Yeah, but, but I mean, we got lucky really early. Like the first, within 10 days, we had a squat. Because you're best friends with Bobby Gillespie. Yeah, I grew up. So, were you at school together, you and Bobby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were right, mate, King Spark school to meet each other. But supposedly... I was reading something the other day on some sort of internet forum that we're like the two most famous people to come out of King's Park Secondary, <laughs> which is funny in itself because it's like, do you know what, we hate school. Uh -huh. I absolutely detested school, you know what I mean? And I think that goes for anybody watching that, just because your standard grades or your A-levels or whatever mm. it is, you don't need to have the best to have a successful career. You don't need to be the think, smartest in the school I, I, to have the biggest and I best think, career. I think, James, for my generation, that's 100% true. I don't know if the younger generation did. I think maybe you do, but I mean, but for, but for our, for, for our, we didn't have a choice. I mean, we we came out with one O level. We there was no expectancy on me or him. He was like a, he was in a worked in a printing factory, and I started working a collar factory. You know, bringing a machine down and, and making collars, and uh, there was we were factory fodder, working class kids, mm -hmm. when we were just factory fodder. But what we did both have is this love of rock and roll, love of punk, and. Uh, when we got the chance, do you know what I mean? We we both we you know, we both done it. And uh, the great thing with Bob is a, uh, you know, he used to design my sleeves and uh when I first started the label. So he'd design the sleeves and and do the sleeves, do you know what I mean? You know? Do you think if you weren't his friends, do you think being each other's best friends helped both your careers strive? Yeah, and big, hit time. The peaks? Uh, big time. Big time because it was like, you know, because there was a lot of times that, you know, we just trusted each other. And we, 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 because we grew up with each other, we were never going to, you know, fuck each other over. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? You know, so it was like, it was an intense friendship. Do you know what I mean? It, the, the downside of that, years later, do you know what I mean? You know, we hated each other's guts for five years. So it's kind of like an intense, we're kind of more like brothers and mates. Do you know what I mean? You know, we're kind of like, he annoys me, I annoy yeah. him, but we love each other. But that's I mean? a sign of good friends is yeah, people, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we live in a softened generation where people can't take a yeah. fucking joke. People can't take yeah. anything serious and then before you know it, yeah. they take the huff. Yeah. And I think if you don't speak to somebody for five years, but even at that stage, you'd have probably thought about him every day. Yeah. It's probably just stubbornness. Yeah. Who's going to phone who first? Who? How yeah. did you end up speaking to again together after the five years? I mean, it's a bit of a celebrity story, but I'll tell you. I, I was a. It was a well, how did it start? It was a petty fucking argument, man. It was like by text. I was getting into DJ in Belfast, and it was just it was one of these fucking stupid arguments, and like we just oh, you know Id idiots but both of us and ended ended up we didn't talk to each other for about five years and then uh, and then I was up a mountain in a uh, in Spain with, with Bob Geldof and pals with and he turns around to me and he goes is that fucking Gillespie over there and I was like I think it is and then I went on over with Bob and then that was that we good mates again that's good isn't it yeah yeah it was, it was fine the minute I saw him but I just didn't see him for five years <laughs> and he's that fine now Oh, yeah, I mean, it's not the same, to be absolutely honest, James. It's different than it was, but it's okay, you know what I mean? I mean, he's a married guy with kids and, you know, I've got a family and all that stuff. So it's easy. But it used to be, we used to live in each other's pockets. It's not that anymore, but we're still good mates. We get older and people drift yeah, yeah, apart, but yeah, yeah. the best mates are the ones who you can phone after six months for a year and they'll be there. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, heartbeat, no, no it's all right. It's but like you're, you're no shy to admit you've had drug abuse and drug yeah, problems yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that and substance abuse. When did that all start? When did you start getting into the drug scene? I suppose, you know, that was probably about 85, 86. Uh, I started dabbling with everything. And then, uh, and then 
end eighty seven, I got started getting really properly tore in, and then really I was just I was just a mess really. Well, not a mess. I was I was, I was I had a huge, had a huge success commercially. Do you know what I mean? Because I had House of Love, My Bloody Valentine, Primals, um, you know, My Bloody I, Ride. All these bands that I had in that zone teenage fan club and they were all having like big big records do you know what i mean scream adelica loveless bandwagon-esque um and then it got to early 94 i mean there was a lot of other stuff happened in that zone i'm like i uh i sold the company half the company to sony at a certain point only because i was going bankrupt but i'd had all these huge albums i had three huge albums out in about two months right and they all were smashing it teenage fan club were breaking america um and and I was still having financial problems, do you know what I mean? Because it was like we started with no money, no seed money. We just started with a thousand pound bank loan in 1984. Uh, so I uh, so basically I sold 51 49% of it to Sony. Uh and we 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 rattled on with it a bit, but the, it was a lot of pressure. And uh, you know, you know, drugs played their part in it. And it got early ninety four, and I just thought I'm going to get off this, do you know what I mean, you know, and I went into rehab and I came out and then I was literally the most sober man in Britpop for the next fucking few years. <laughs> <laughs> Every other fucker was off the nut, but I, I wasn't, I wasn't off my nut. I was how, but how could you run, when you were on the drugs at the time, how could you run so many successful bands? Do you think that helped it for some weird reason? In a reason? weird way at that point in my life. To take did. away the pressure and the worry and yeah. the anxiety. Yeah, yeah. I did, I did at that point. Was it Coke? Was it Charlie? Cocaine, um, uh, Booze, um, speed, just you, your suspects, out. yeah, 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 everything. So, but then in the 80s and 90s, it was kind of the thing to do, it was the drug scene was majorly yeah, yeah. kicking off there, so it must have felt yeah. normal, yeah, getting on it with everybody, we on it with all the bands, and just, yeah, everybody, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I was the biggest party person at the label at that point, do you know what I mean? You know, <laughs> it's like, but it was, it was just, it was, <laughs> it was just what it was. I mean, it was a zone of like when I was in it, and then I got out of it, and then. And it was quite difficult for people to get their head around the fact I'd changed, you know what I mean, you know? That is difficult for people... I was young though, James. I was 33. That's mm -hmm. a young time to get sober. I mean, what age did you get sober? 35. I get, I get sober uh, at 30. A young, if, 30. You, if you get sober in your 30s, it's very young. But I've relapsed two or three times. Yeah, I relapsed in... After that, I relapsed in um, 2002, 2003, when I was managing the Libertines. <laughs> and, I, and I relapsed with the booze for a couple of years but I've been sober ever since do you know what I mean I've been sober so was it 2004 I've basically been sober most of my adult life congratulations now. But, but do you I think mean, it helps the mindset Alan 100% James I got off a uh, prescription medication uh, in December and I've been on that for about 20 years and that was a uh, Valiums and um, and antidepressants and uh, it took me about a year to come off it a year and a bit but it, it was so I'm so grateful that I, I could have come well off. Done. I'm in a great, I'm in a great headspace again. Well, this is definitely a new chapter of your life. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. For everything you've came through. When you were on the drug scene, you signed Oasis when? It was it 92? Um, 93. 93. Me, 93, I met them at King Tut's Wawa. One of the biggest bands in the world. Ever. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, you know, how, did, how, did that how did that come about? It was a fluke, James. It's like, I was up, I was up the week before in Glasgow doing something because I was massively into the acid house thing and I think I was still kind of going to the sub club and all that sort of stuff uh, you know early 90s I think I'd been at the sub club the week before and I'd realised that this girl that I was used to kick about with it was in this band Sister Lovers Debbie Turner I, I realised she was playing her a, a first show at King Tut's Wawa Hut at the end of May I think it was a bank holiday Sunday at that end in the May 93 and I showed up and when I got there it was sort of kicking off with these Mad Mancunians, you know, about 12 of them. And uh, and the security, a little bit, it was getting really feisty. And they were in this band, and I'd, I'd never heard them, but they'd come up on, totally on the make. Did not, didn't know I was coming around, because Debbie didn't know I was coming, just to see if they could get on the bill. They jumped in the bus, and this was Oasis. And then, you know, I said to the promoter, which was DF, I think it was, and I said, oh, let them, let them play four songs, because it was all my bands that were playing. And I went on up just to make sure that they didn't beat my band up. You know, they had two little bands on. And uh, and Oasis played and they played four songs. And then I, at that point, I was like, oh, fuck, I'm signing them. Do you know what I mean? And then at the end, Coyley, who 
was doing the Oasis sound, used to do the Teenage Fan Club sound. They, their tour manager threw him off because he'd been doing coke, right? He, 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 so I went up to Coily. Coily loved me because I used to do coke with Coily. And, uh, and I said to Coily, oh, like, who's who's the leader of the band? Who's the manager? And he went, oh, it's it's a, it's a um, Noel Gallagher. And I was like, all oh, right, okay. And, uh, you know, I did not let Noel Gallagher know him, but like, I got presented with Noel. And I just went, oh, do you want, can I like, sign you? Do you know what I mean? And uh, that was it. It was good. Because they were threatening to, were they threatening to smash up the place? They were, it was, it was, they were, they didn't, if they'd they never didn't, played. They didn't say it. It was by inference, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But they, 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 it would have been quite hard for the security to deal with because it was about two security and 12 manks, you know what be, I mean? Because there was, was a... It was under, easier to let them play, to yeah, be honest. Do you know I was what I mean? A, was there YouTube? Who? YouTube? Eh, uh, YouTube. YouTube management trying to sign them and double their... Salary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a guy called uh, Malcolm at their record company, YouTube's record company, tried to double or treble the, the advance, and Andy McDonald at Codas tried to sign them. But to be fair, Oasis were always like that. No, no Gallagher in particular, very loyal, do you know what I mean? Yeah, a, a massive band. Do you think yeah. if you never signed them, your career would be as it was? But you don't no, really I mean, sign I mean, big bands No, I'd, I'd done good up to that point. I'd done good as... Kind of, I'd, I'd done as well as anybody else was doing, if you know what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, up to that point, as in the music business, that would have been like if you'd had Screamadelica and Teenage Fan Club and blah blah blah, that would have been kind of cool. You know, I mean, I'd have been doing as good as anybody else was doing, if you know what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, but then, I mean, Oasis. I mean, I think it, well, I was involved with. I think we sold somewhat sixty million records. Do you know what I mean? And it's still going. I think it must be about hundred million records. That's unbelievable. It's a, lot. a guy for Kings Park, and yeah. that must make you proud. It must make you proud. But even though it's difficult, because people who live that life, it doesn't seem as big. It's, yeah. It might sound weird, but yeah. because you've lived it, it might not seem as big. Liam Gallagher, Noel Gallagher. But for people looking at the outside, right. it is fucking phenomenal. Right. It is phenomenal. Yeah. I don't really see it like the way you're saying it. Yeah. But I hear you because most people's reaction is like that. But mm-hmm. I don't. Because I suppose I've lived inside that bubble for a long time, do you know what I mean? I think the question that probably everybody wants to ask is, do you think they'll ever get back together? It is the question they have to ask the whole mm-hmm. time. No, I don't think in it, not in the foreseeable future, James, do you know what I mean? Maybe in years to come, maybe, but I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of bad blood between them at the moment, you know what I mean? Do you think it would they would ever be as big? I think it would be, it'd be big, do you know what I mean? You know, that's not, under, it's just, you know, try and get to the end of the gig without killing each other you know uh-huh. what I mean? but you know if they did it they'd still be good I think you know what I mean because you've got the social media you've got the online platform yeah. they never had that in the 90s no and you look at how many albums they'd sold no, worldwide well yeah I mean they were like they, they went viral before you could go viral do you know what I mean mm-hmm. you know literally that just exploded do you know what I mean it took everybody by surprise when a bit because I signed them May 93 and, and but it actually didn't get them signed to about that October took me about five months to get them signed but it's like and then they, they did Nebworth August 96 so that was a really fast they did Scotland they did they did Loch Lomond do you know what I mean you know, it was like really, they love Scotland what's that they love Scotland yeah, no, it's like it was a really fast um, it was a really really fast you know ascension yeah because when you look at the two of them the two of them are they're both legends they are they're, yeah yeah they're again one of the biggest bands ever yeah yeah when you signed them, did you realise when you first watched them, did you think to yourself, they're going to be massive? They're going to be no, I think the absolute opposite. I thought they're probably good for an album, and they <laughs> and, 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 and they're good for an album. If I get out before the Stone Roses second album, I might nick some of that audience. But I never thought it was a career band. I was just putting it out. I thought it's a good band. It's it's quite Stone Roses, you know, because it's I've it's, it's seen four songs bang it out and see what happens and it fucking exploded who was the worst one to deal with Noel or Liam um the one, I, I, this is the real truth I, I never had really bad experience with the Gallaghers at all Liam was always nice and and Noel was a gen do you know what I mean do you know what I mean you know I've had more run-ins with them post than during that do you know what I mean you know <laughs> because that's when you were at yeah how did when you signed them you, were you still on the drugs at that point then 93 I was, uh, I've partied a few times with Oasis, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That must have lasted a good few months at a time. No, it, it, it was like, when I signed in May 93, I got sober February 94, but I had a few good nights with them, do you know what I mean? Would, what do you think the Oasis' best song is for yourself, personally? Probably Slide Away, do you know what I mean? For the early stuff, anyway. Uh, I love Slide Away, but I mean, I, mean, I love I loved lots of it, you know what I mean? It's a good band. For all the, the bands that you've had, who would you say was your best album? 
ever. Uh, debut album. Well, debut is probably Oasis, definitely, maybe, but maybe the best album ever put out was Scream of Delica. Yeah. Primal Scream, yeah. Because Libertines and that are great as well. Yeah, yeah. And then he actually put that out. I just managed them. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. The management game is phenomenal. <laughs> what you've, you've achieved. Did you have that drive to be no, successful? Not really. I mean, I just wanted to, I just like music. I still do. I mean, I still manage Happy Mondays and cast in Las Vegas. Do you know, I still manage a few bands. And I've got Creation going again as a seven inch label, James, called Creation 23. And I've got a load of little bands. But I'm, you know, I just do music because I want to do it, James. I'm like, and it's doing it at 58. You're doing it because you want to do it. Do you know what I mean? Ultimately, you know what I mean? Because the people that, most of the people that I grew up with and, st you know, they've all quit now. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. like, I suppose they don't love it as much as me. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? They, they, most of them are fucked up. You've got to have your passion for something. It doesn't matter how much money you make or yeah. what you do. If you've not got that drive or that passion yeah. to keep achieving, to keep producing number one albums or yeah. to keep signing the biggest bands. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a bit different. I mean, you know, we're not, I don't, we're not really put that many records out in recent times. But but we're starting again with the little bands putting out like, putting out seven and singles. It's going to be good, you know. So what is the seven? What is that you're doing? I just I just say you know when I run into like there was it was out the Mondays in Australia when you contacted me, and uh, I am signing the the band that was out playing was in Australia the Lulu Rays. So I'm just like I'm just having it. I literally change. I'm having a good time at the moment. It's a good time in my life. Clean and sober. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Putting, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've been sober for a long time, but getting off the meds is big as well, man. Massive. Of course, and I always say that. I think, I think pharmaceutical drugs kill more people yeah. than any other drugs, so it can just be as bad. Yeah, just yeah. because a doctor prescribes it, it doesn't mean it's actually yeah, yeah. helping. And I understand that some people yeah. use it to maybe help their nerves or sleep or whatever yeah. medication they're on. But for me personally, yeah. the feel good factor in naturally yeah. being no, no, it's, clean. It's, it's big. We were talking before we, you came on, before we came on, I said, talking about the mental health thing. And it's like, I think. I think in, you know, a lot of the drug stuff going on in music is mental health issues. I mean, I'd say that I've been plagued by mental health issues probably my entire life, but I've, I've broken them, I've broken it down just by numbing it with drugs, do you know what I mean, you know? So it's like, you know, I think that's what I did, you know what I mean? How did you come off at all? Did you go to rehab or? Yeah, I went to rehab, really close to here actually. I went to the Charter Nightingale and a, just next to a Paddington Station. You know, I went in there. Do you know what I mean? You know. Sorry, it was just somebody walking by there. Yeah, 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 right. But you're feeling great now. Yeah, I'm fucking. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm you know, it's weird coming off like even because you don't really think about it. You just think it's meds. But coming off the, the this prescription drugs, it's like you could feel yourself, you know, really booming, and you're like, oh, right, I, I, this is what normality. Is. Energy. I, I haven't seen this space in my head for, for a, while, a long time. You know what I mean. Because it's trying to quiet the demons down. It's trying yeah. to quiet everything down in the mind, whether yeah. it's whatever we're thinking about. And we yeah. spoke about it earlier, about the, 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 the addictions. Yeah. It it does. We, we take drugs to sh try and shut it up in here, yeah, whatever the fuck we're overthinking. And I think with me, it was definitely, definitely that. You know, with, with, you know when I was on coke and booze and all that. And then like, it's, it's been different times that I've, I've definitely used it to nullify myself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it's difficult. And, but you've done it. No, I know. I mean, I mean, the thing is, the interesting thing, James, for your programme, because I know you, what you're trying to do, but you're going to reach people that are got addiction problems. I've, I've, I've been a drug addict. I've been a recovering drug addict. I've been an alcoholic. You know, all these different things. That, and I've still had success. Do you know what I mean? And it's, you know, you can't, if you put your mind to it, you can do whatever you need to do. But it's a lot, the only thing I'd say is a lot easier to do it sober. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. I wouldn't yeah. say. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit like today, meeting you today and getting here 20 to 10 ready for you. It's like, you know, I mean, I'd, the old me would have been like, yeah, it'll show up at some point. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'd Stall like, out. <laughs> you know I mean? Stall out. Yeah, no. I think yeah. it's, um, it is, it's, it's definitely, it's a no better feeling than being clean and sober, but not necessarily yeah. because you're clean and sober. Yeah. Every day's a great day. We yeah. still have our moments. I still battle every fucking day. Yeah, yeah. Whatever problem or addiction yeah. I have, I still think about gambling. I still think about the drugs. Yeah, yeah. And Big Mark, who's gave us his place in Harley Street today. Yeah, yeah, yeah speaks about it when he tells his story but we're laughing we kind of yeah. get excited yeah. because we know how fucked up and crazy it was yeah. and sometimes everything does quiet down but again it's to stay in the right path and do big things do you think now that if you signed a band who are mad on the drugs you would try and guide them more and try and it's difficult I mean I had libertines and they were like off their nut do you know what I mean you know um, and you know I don't think you know I didn't get them sober let me put it that way you know what I mean 
Um, in some ways, it, it, I think, it, you know, if a band are just absolutely mad like that, you're probably only frustrating yourself because you can see that if they did it sober, they'd be like, they'd be in a much better place in their heads. Yeah. But but people, the, the thing is, it's like, you, you know it and I know it. I mean, if you're not ready to get off, then there's no point in anybody berating you too much about it because it's like it's it's got it comes you within you know if, yeah, you, if you're going to get sober definitely you, know? you need to want to change yourself and it's a bit like it's it, you know the thing is it's like it's it's just a better place to be and you're, you're happier in your head mm -hmm. you know if you can, you can get off everything but anybody that takes drugs are escaping are hiding yeah, yeah, from yeah, yeah. normality they don't like life yeah but yet when they take drugs they're all loud oh well, yeah high I mean they're, they're, if we're being honest with each other they're, they're scared of something generally. definitely. Do you know what I mean? It's like they're hiding because they're scared. Yeah. Do you know what I totally mean? agree. And all the biggest, baddest men out there who sit yeah. at parties and they, yeah. they think it's great. It ain't great because... Well, we've done it. Yeah. I mean, I, I've totally done it. But it's like, but ultimately you're scared of something. That's really what you're hiding from. Mm -hmm. Normality. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there's... <was> Fuck normality. <laughs> <laughs> what would you class as a good manager then or a, a good record label? How would you... Because well, there doesn't seem to be a lot of a lot of people seem to fall out a lot more now. Yeah. There's not doesn't seem to be a lot more loyalty in the industry. Yeah. How do you how would you say I think makes just, a good manager? just understand the group, try and try and facilitate what the group are trying to do. Um and you, you know, you can add your own experience and you can you know, if you understand the game, then you can you can make it wider for them, do you know what I mean? Definitely, but for you, you've you run one of the biggest le record labels in yeah. United Kingdom. I was mad. I got a really good run of the green. I think a lot of it though with James was I came along at the right time. Do you know what I mean? And I got there was a few lucky breaks I got. Do you know what I mean? My best friend was Bobby Gillespie, who was like a fucking great music guy that had success with his band, which trained me up mm -hmm. to sign Oasis and deal with that. And I had six, seven years with Oasis, you know, that I was like, you know, when it when it was like really like, you know, it was really intense in that 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 nineties period. Um so you know, I got kind of I got lucky a couple. Yeah, of but times. I believe you make your own luck because you've got to roll the dice. Yeah, yeah. you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't yeah. take, and I know it's such a cheesy line. It's probably been seen and said everywhere. But yeah. if you never went to King Tut's, if you never, oh, no, I know you've spoke got to, to these places. You've got to open the doors, and yeah. you coming here today opens more doors for me because fuck's sake, Alan McGee's yeah. on that show. That's and well, you've got to be in it to win it. Exactly. You know, I mean, it's like you know, the fact is, in 1993 when I went into that place, I was probably the only person mad enough in the music business to be in Glasgow on a bank holiday Sunday night going to a show to see the fourth band on the bill mm -hmm. <laughs> even though it was, it was a fluke so you make, you do make your own luck to a certain extent do you think if you'd never signed Oasis that night then somebody else would have took them I think they would have got signed whether they look it was a perfect fit both ways you know they changed my life completely I'm not denying that but equally we gave them the we gave them the setting to be Oasis if they'd went into a more corporate structure I'm not sure it would have worked for them just as well. Yeah, as much I mean? as they've changed your life, you've also changed theirs. I, I contributed, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Are you still in contact with the guys? A little bit. I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm great friends with Noel. I just haven't seen him for about a year. Saw him uh, at a Gorillaz gig when he was jumping up and I was with Sean Ryder, who I manage. I saw him. I haven't seen Liam for a bit. I'm DJed for him last year, but I never saw him at the gig. So, you know, but we're, we're all, we're actually all right. You know what I mean? You know, so when I see them, I see them. Ah, oh, they're good. I still, I mean, you see them, you see them. <laughs> and that's good. Do you think you ever find a band is as big? Are you no. on the hunt for somebody? No, I mean, I've always had my, on the hunt for great new stuff, but I mean, I don't think it's not, it's not, no, it's, I don't think anybody could be as big as that anymore. It's like, that was a phenomenon that culture, what, it was post acid house, all the club kids wanted like, wanted a rock band and tunes and it was just culture just decided that they wanted something at that point and that was Oasis and it blew up I don't think I don't think everything could come together again like that mm -hmm. do you know what I mean Divine Timing was that you Divine know? Timing just yeah I mean it was it wasn't was for that long it was only for two or three years but it was massive at that point what was the script with the drummer the first album The Boy Who Got Sacked what I, was that story that was just you know I don't think the way they were going with their music you know, I think he'd have probably struggled to, to be the drummer. And I think it was as basic as that. Do you know what I mean? Just wasn't I, I actually, to, to his credit though, I actually really liked the drumming in the first album because it's so punk. Mm -hmm. But, but I don't think when you got to the bigger songs in the second album, I don't think uh, he'd have really been able to do it. But 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 the what, what I do, I feel sorry for him getting that far along the journey up to some might say, and then no telling him he's out the band. Do you know what I mean? It was cruel. You know. What I mean? 
of course, but sometimes the progress and if you see a weakness or you see something yeah, that can strengthen it's up. It's just the way it is. It's like, it was, but it's a cruel twist of fate, you know course, what I mean? You know? Especially with the success they had. Yeah, 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 yeah. After that. Yeah. Because you're running, Glass Vegas, how are they getting on? It's good. It's like, you know, it's like James, it's like, you know, we, they need to do a gig for about three or four years, do you know what I mean? And uh, and I found them initially, again, at King Tots. <laughs> uh, I, I, I need to get myself down to King Tots. I know, I know. It was in 2006, James. And uh, I, I was a, uh, they were like third on the bill. And I'd, I'd been talking to his sister, who, who's the co-manager. And, uh, you know, and I went, saw it. It was great. And then I kind of like, I was like really down with him and everything. And uh, then I went off to bring up my daughter in 2008 in Wales for five years. And uh, they went on and trundled through being in Las Vegas. And then about a year and a half ago we all got in contact with each other again properly and I, I met them in Glasgow and then like I, I've ended up going back into management uh, with, with the sister you know so we, we managed Las Vegas together Do you think there's anybody coming through the ranks just now in the UK? Or? There's some good bands some good little bands uh, you know I mean you know I've got a few and there's like there's, you know I've got, I've, got, I've got three or four really good ones and they there's some good bands like in England, Idol, Shame, Ireland, Fontaine's DC. There's some good bands. Is there any bands that you've seen and you thought they're just as good as Oasis but never reached the heights potentially? Well, I, I, I mean, I should have. Yeah, there's loads of bands that go half the way there. But usually there's a personality default in the middle of that. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, like somebody's going to like not quite right, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Just like anything in life, isn't it? Is there a lot of bands that they like to drink, they like to party is it, and fight? And is that, yeah. that's, that's the kind of yeah. the scene for the like, punk rock stuff in the. Yeah. Well, I mean, is that I, no tiring? Is it no, you go fuck their me? There's not really so much like that anymore, James. It's like, it's more like, you know, if anything, they're all worried about their careers. It's, it's like give us some of these old style bands that, that are mm. a bit mental because at least they're, they're, you know, at least they're spicy. Do you know what I mean? Uh, do you know think that buys it though? People buy that the the bands that don't give a fuck, the ones that just. I think so. It's got you've got to have the tunes though. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I mean, the Libertines got away with it because they had the tunes. No matter how mental Peter was or Carol was, you know, they had the tunes. Do you know what I mean? You know? Yeah. So, what's your plans for the future? Where do you see yourself? I just, I'm just going to keep keep doing it, James. Do you know what I mean? You know, I'm going to, uh, you know, I want to, I want to develop the label a little bit. Uh, you know, put out some more records. Um, it, you know, it, I'm on the lookout for maybe another couple of bands to manage that are more established. Um, I'm going to do this Q and A tour this year, next year. Um, I'm, to be honest, I'm just kind of having a good time doing it. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I'm in London mainly to try and keep my son sober. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what I'm really up to. You know, I'm down here, you know, and, and I'm in London a lot more because of that. You know what well, I mean? Fingers crossed because, like I say, you're on a good path. You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. doing good things. You can think yeah. straight and. Yeah. Because it can be difficult, especially London. It's 100 mile an hour. I, I try to say hello to two people today, and it's kind of as if you've just threw shit in their face. It's, <laughs> a, it's a kind of. It's, it's, I love it down here. It's yeah, like, yeah. It is a buzz, but nobody smiles. They forget to live. They forget to take. Too busy. They're too busy trying to get to their meeting. And they're just. <laughs> um, it's. It's a. Uh, I love it, but look, I'm in Harley Street interviewing Alan McGee. Do you know what I mean? I've came a long way, and it's great. But it's the first time I've been in Harley Street, not seen a shrink. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see many? Back in the day, oh, many psychologists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, uh, there's, there's one just literally is just down the corner. One of the main guys in in London is a guy called Keith Stall that I have seen a few times, and he's just down that Wigmore Lane, literally down there. It's a beautiful street. I mean, literally about ten yards away from this front door is his street. I was laughing when I was going. I know that street. That is a cracking street, but this is the, the street for the big, the big, the biggest clinics in the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All the plastic surgery, all the yeah, psychologists. Yeah. Again, but there's a psychologist probably here, 1,500 quid an hour or whatever. But Not quite, but I know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're up the arse out it, don't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. So for your plans and to create... I'm just going to keep going, James. I mean, I want to do it till I'm 75, eh? But if I can get away with it. Have you got a time limit on it? No, I'm not. I mean, I'm like, I swim every day, man. I'm like, I'm really healthy at the moment. I'm like, I swim every day. You know, I mean, I've kind of got my joy of life back. You How's know? your eating? Great, man. I was like, hey, like, totally healthy way i'm no coffee coffee's a big one actually everything's going oh, i'll have a cup of coffee it's an addiction. i think it i think it gets your gut 
and I think your gut's got an intelligence weirdly it makes your whole body go like that mm. get off the coffee well your gut's connected to your uh, brain your gut's yeah. the same material as your brain I think that's so. why when you get your, right? yeah, yeah yeah so yeah. when you get a gut feeling yeah. it's actually your second brain telling you yeah so it's all connected it's all made of the same material well, well, but coffee gives you that anxious thing and no meat I'm off the meat I green machines all the time vegetarian and, yeah but pescatarian I take fish. that fish yeah yeah and the uh, yeah, and I'm on that, that apple cider vinegar. It's great, man. Fuck's sake, Alan, you've went full, <laughs> you've went full health kick, haven't you? But what, I'm the same, apple cider vinegar with hot water. Yeah. I was vegan, yeah, yeah. but I love chocolate. I yeah. love chocolate and yeah. I went vegetarian. I've, yeah. I've dug a Do you know who was it told me about apple cider vinegar? It was Bez. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, because it Bez. Happy said, Mondays? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said to me, because he goes, McGee, get on apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whatever, Bez. And then... My missus actually said to me, you need to get on apple cider vinegar because mm. I had colitis a couple of years ago and and it, and it changed my diet and, ch you know, got on apple cider vinegar and it totally changed me. So it cleans out your gut? Yeah, yeah. It cleans yeah. out everything. Yeah, There's yeah. so many remedies and that's where I don't... That apple cider vinegar, I got off stomach meds and everything because of that. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. powerful. Yeah, yeah. The old stuff, is a wee place I go to in Glasgow called Roots and Fruits and yeah. I got all that stuff. And But it's weird, isn't it, now that, you know, you like the, the other, the rock and roll generation are now all... We're all into kind of eating healthy and mm -hmm. drinking and drinking healthy, you know what I mean? Is Bez clean and sober? Yeah, is he... no, he's not, I don't really call him clean and sober, but he's actually, he's actually, you know, he is into all the different uh, the, the health stuff, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, there's remedies for everything, I think, because of the internet, there's so much more research yeah. where you can actually look into things because we're, we're just uneducated. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. We're yeah. used to the, the pieces and sausage with hundreds yeah. of tomato sauce and <laughs> big bottles of you know I mean? pieces in sausage <laughs> I should keep, spend more time in glass because <laughs> I've not got them down here I, no no but it's just that nobody says pieces in uh, sausage because we went across the road Steph yeah. what was that place we went to across the road Prep yeah. Steph rolling it was like we rolling sausage yeah. in glass we get like crispy rolls and some modern <laughs> rolls they're beautiful it's just, I think there's more research now. I think people are just uneducated but, at what they're eating or what they're drinking. Even drugs. When you're taking drugs, you don't know what the fuck you're putting up your no, nose. terrible. I mean, I, I now, when I think about my time going, I mean, like, you know, especially in America, I just like, what was I doing? You know what I mean? Were you taking a lot of drugs in America? Yeah, I was everywhere, you know what I mean? Take crazy. That's it, but that was it. That was the lifestyle, that yeah, yeah. kind of glitz and, yeah. glitz and glam lifestyle. And a lot of people who look from the outside think, I want that life, no realising yeah. there's more people with mental health issues yeah. that are famous than anybody I think in right. the world. I think you're right. Because And, and in, in a way, people, you know, you can now tell when people are having issues, do you know what I mean? You know, it's like, you know, because people are calling it what it is, do you know what I mean? You know, yeah. when people are having meltdowns, it's like, it's not because they're a diva, because they're not right, do you know what I mean? You yeah, know? because fame is an illusion it doesn't yeah, really yeah. exist yeah. it's people, a useless currency yeah you people know I mean? say oh he's looking for fame or he's yeah, doing yeah. this fame doesn't mean fuck all yeah, but yeah. i think when people are on a pedestal and people are, are craving their attention once people don't crave their attention as much they start thinking their life's inadequate they don't yeah, feel yeah, as yeah. important and that's when they either dabble on drink or drugs to feel yeah important again because you look at girls like amy winehouse what a talent yeah, what yeah, a, yeah crazy what a, absolute great talent and yeah you see a lot. But, of I've had some of my pals, so it's like you know, Robert Young, throw up in Primal Screen, died at forty nine. I mean, loads of people with that have just went. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, biggest party guy in our whole thing, our whole, you know, our whole um, scene coming through to London and everything like that, and you know, ended up dying. You know what I mean? Has anybody ever tried to come out and speak out about like the 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 band kind of scene and the the like? Because it was socially acceptable to go to a hotel, smash them up. But you know what, and James? Party. It's bigger than that. It's like I remember the first time you get when you're a little guy in a band or a manager in a band. When when I was managing the Mary Chain when I was like 23, we 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 got we blew up, and I was a manager. And you'd go into like Nottingham Rock City, and you'd open the fridge, and there'd be 50 beers, and you're 23, and it's all for free. You're like, are they free? Do you pay for them? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And, that's, and like, so the culture is take what you want. You've travelled the world. Where's the best place you've been to? Where's the best place that you you love and the best yeah. people that ha you've had a good band and the, the the fans are great and um I don't know, mate. It's like I, I mean, I just visited Australia last last week. Uh, that was great. I was, that was a sold out Happy Mondays tour in Australia. That was great. Maybe Japan, man. I love Japan. I'm going there in about three weeks' time to DJ. So what yeah. you do? What kind of stuff do you DJ? I, I just, I just whatever, whatever really. For that thing, it'll be kind of dancey. Be much more, more like an old acid house set, acid house kind of set for the nineties. But it's like a late eighties. But 
you know, I mean, it depends who his booking is. Do you know what I mean? If it's a load of fucking Britpop kids, I'll 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 play. You know what I'll play? I'll, I'll play Oasis, the yeah, Libertines, yeah. the Beatles. You know what I mean? You know. How has your style of music changed as you've got older? Have you, the, how does it no, progress? Kind of, Are no, still... because, because I'm still turned on by the same music. I'm still turned on by glam and punk. That's what I'm into. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's anybody coming through the ranks again? I've, I know I've asked the question in the UK, but worldwide, is there anybody that sticks out for you? Yeah, that's, that's good, just good new bands. It's like you just, you know, you can never, you just got to keep aware because you can never tell who's going to be great. I remember when I first heard Nirvana and I was like, you know, I mean, you know, you know, and they were fully formed. I was like, "How did I know hear this before?" Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, the way we think, and everybody's yeah. different. It's, I mean, when that was a great time for for music, James. The nineties was just it's so many great bands. You know, like the obvious ones are like Nirvana and Oasis, but it's like, but it, it's just so many great bands for the nineties. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, aye, eighties, nineties, Queen. Yeah, eighties, eighties was great. But who would you say was the big takeaway Oasis? Who would you say was the biggest band of all time? Um, well, they're not the biggest band of all time, but they're big. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for me, <sighs> the Beatles probably, ultimately. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Queen and that were amazing. Amazing, yeah, yeah. yeah. I liked them. Yeah, the Beatles, I think they're still number one bestseller yeah, yeah. worldwide. Yeah, because it's like it's a never ending sort of thing. You know what I mean? You know, it's like, and I think they got so popular. There's a, there's a reversion of copyright after 50 years. I think they've had to change the laws. To make it seventy five years because the Beatles are still popular. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did Michael Jackson have the rights to their songs? Or he had the publishing rights. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because yeah. that must have been worth hundreds of yeah. hundreds. I met someone. Michael Jackson. Did you? Yeah, I did meet him. Yeah, Where? I met him twice. The first time was in nineteen ninety two. It's before the paedophile shit, and because uh, he came, I think it was he was outed as a paedophile initially, but nineteen ninety four, and I just signed to Sony with Creation, and they said, "Oh, come to Japan to meet everybody." And I flew to Japan, and a week in Japan, at the end of it, Michael Jackson had been doing eight nights at the Tokyo Dome, right? And they, and and I, I was, and Bobby was in town, I think Bobby was playing a show, and Bobby wanted to go, and I didn't want to go, and they went, they went, Gillespie's not coming, right? But we'll have the gay, only because they thought I was more sane. <laughs> foolishly, right? Fuck with Aaron. <laughs> and, 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 and then we, we went through all the security, and they, we we get taken in and then we put in this room of like people wanting to meet Michael Jackson. I was the only person in the room that didn't want to meet Michael Jackson. And so Sony were picking five people to meet Michael Jackson and I went, Alan McGee, create on records. And I, and I went through and he's really tall, Michael Jackson. And it was like a photo opportunity. And they never sent me the photo. Right? And uh, you had to announce yourself to Michael Jackson. And, I went, and when I get nervous, I get really Scottish. Right? And I went, Oh, Mickey, creation record. And I'm like, Michael Jackson, look at me, you fucking freak. You know, you know, that, that, and I, got, I met him that time. And then, uh, just for a photo, and then uh, the next time I met him was about 96. And uh, I was getting on Concord, and uh, I, there was a guy, a, a really high up British, British Airbus kind of guy, went, are you with Michael? And this was something early, early uh, January 97, I think it was. And we went, yeah, we're just taking the piss, me and my pal. And we went on up the back and it was, this is when I kind of knew he was a paedophile, though, right? There was, um, there was Michael Jackson, I bet, I mean, there was four security, or two security, two or three security, I think. A manager guy, I think, or a tour manager guy, Michael Jackson, and about a 14 or a 15 year old guy dressed as Michael Jackson on Concord. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's fucking weird. Do you know what I mean? Because who's who travels with one of their fans dressed mm -hmm. up as them? And you had to go at that point. That's not right. Do you know what I mean? It's not right. I think he's there's never any smoke without fire. Yeah, that's what I think. Do you know what I mean? Point, I've always and thought it, I know and yeah. he's not right. Well, in the back of your mind, but then you look at guys like Jimmy Savile who yeah. they've just got a question mark. You're just looking at them, they've got a question mark, but they were yeah. loved. And it's hard. Because he's never had a conviction, of Michael Jackson, and he's not here to fight his case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's difficult. Yeah, yeah. But I no, do, it's interesting all the stuff that's just Yeah, it's all this stuff there, but there's, again, there isn't any smoke without fire, but for me, I think he was young himself, and apparently he was castrated. That they, like, um, they basically took his balls away so they could keep his... This is just stories that are about so they could keep his voice so young. Is that right? So he never really fully matured, yeah, right, right, and right, I think... Right. I get, it's such a touchy subject that it's so mixed, but again, that industry, that industry is... 
that is rife yeah. with it. And yeah, it's sad to think that because he's he was the biggest he was the biggest artist out of them all. Yeah. He was the but I mean, I mean, all I know, James, is I, I actually met him a couple of times. The second time I met him, he was a fifteen-year-old, fourteen-year-old boy dressed. Yeah, how so. how was he when you met him? Like, was he, it weird he, then? He, he, we didn't really say anything to him. We just we just kind of looked at him. We looked at him. Do you know what I mean? But we we were just thinking, you know, me and my pal Ed Ball, we were just thinking, fucking weird guy, man. I mean, That's, he, he yeah. would fly about with a uh -huh. fourteen, fifteen-year-old version. It's the, yeah, it's the fact maybe that, a guy that was into that would. But yeah. I mean, weird. But we were like, that's too weird. But it's a bit blatant, and it? it's a bit out there. But he was in. I think it was in the sun. Like I keep some of the mirror of the sun. The date like Michael Jackson with. It didn't, they didn't even say he was with a young boy. It was just like it was going through the through the the airport at Heathrow. I think we landed. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, you know? Yeah, it's a, it's a touchy subject, and it's hard to think. But again, it's yeah. It's just one of those fucking things that people are are kind of mad in that industry that people do go kind of nuts yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean it's yeah. was there anybody you've met like, you've met a lot of your listers in your time yeah, yeah. was there anybody you were starstruck with or want, really want to meet yeah you? one time I was in the dressing room uh, the only time ever really that I have been starstruck if you want to call it that I didn't know what to say it was, uh, I was in it was in Glasgow again it was in the SEC and a teenage fan club supporting Neil Young and Neil Young came in the dressing room for about 10 seconds and walked out and I was like <laughs> 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 Another time I was in Glasgow, I was at the what's that wee posh gaff? Uh uh oh, is it one what's that hotel up in the West End? Oh one Devonshire Gardens. One Devonshire Gardens, I was staying there, right? And uh, James Brown had been playing the SEC the night before and I walked into the room and it was an empty it was an empty room, it was a posh version of this room, and sitting there was James Brown, like, like up in the chair, and I was like and I thought, and I just walked out. Because <laughs> I didn't know what he say. What do you say to James Brown? That's another loving legend, James I Brown. I've been, I've been there a couple of times I've went, I'm not doing this. Do you know what I mean? He's not. Uh, but usually I'm okay. Usually I'm just like, how you doing? The American, why is the American star so big? Over there, like your James Browns, your Marvin Gaye's, back in the day, the, the stardom that they had was... I don't know. Because America's so big as well. Yeah, just, as you know, I suppose once you get... To that level, it's you know you don't fall down, so it's a bit. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? They're up there. But your Stevie Wonders, they're, they're yeah, massive, brilliant, massive brilliant. Yeah, yeah. guests. Was there anybody from the UK that went to America and never cracked it that you thought should have cracked it? I mean, I, I you know, I mean, there's loads of people should have cracked America. I mean, Oasis should have cracked America. They've done okay, but I mean, they should have got absolutely massive in America. You know, loads of bands. Most British bands should have should have cracked. It's always weird British bands crack America. Isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Did they not? Yeah, is it because David of, Gray or something? Did they not know. like? Why, why is that? Did they not like the the personalities or the music? I think what it is, I mean, the old school America. I'm not so sure anymore if it's like this, but the old the British bands were too they were too outspoken, really, generally mm -hmm. speaking, for America. They don't they they don't really want anybody with their own opinion. Do you know what I mean? You know, the Americans don't really act like that. They don't really do they? But. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's. I mean, you go to see Bruce Springsteen and and you know in like New Jersey, and there's like he's in an arena. He's so doing five nights at an arena in New Jersey, and there's not one black person there. Do you know what I mean? It's a weird country. Do you know what I mean? It's all everybody's like white and about forty year old. Do you know what I mean? You know? Yeah, it's so big. It's fucking massive. Yeah. So you're loving life, you know. You're doing well. You're in a good place. I'm, I'm in a good place. I mean, I mean, I could be doing better, but I mean, I always say that. How come? I oh, know, I just like doing things, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do, you, do you like to keep busy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that to quiet and keep the mind at bay? No, I think it's just, I just, I'm addicted to doing shit. Did do you know? ever goal set or anything or plan no, what you no, were going to I, do? Or... No, I just get on with it and done it and done it. Just... I was thinking about this recently when I was a kid, before I got, got a break in the music business, maybe 22, because I, I got, I got, started to happen at 23 because I managed the Mary chain, we blew up, and then I was in like California, plenty 4,000 people managing the band, it was like mad. But I, mean, I suppose when 21, 22, I used to think, it'll be my year next year. Do you know what I mean? So I suppose it was a wee bit like that. And then when it happened, you just get into it. Only fools and horses this time next yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? but I yeah, but I think I was a bit like that when I was a kid. Do you know what I mean? But you've done it. Yeah, you've, you've, you've done, done, right. done it. You've, yeah, yeah. you've not done it, man. You've done it for, for King's Park to Harley Street. <laughs> Is there any bands you would have loved to have got that you you think I could have took them even further than what Well, I mean, I don't know what if, they if were. I could have taken them further. Who knows? But I'd love to have worked with Stone Roses. One of my favourite bands, do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of the punk bands, I was just a bit young for it. Do you know what I mean, really? Do you know what I mean? Because 
when, like by the time I got there, they, they, were, they were kind of on the descent. Uh, but I mean, I love a lot of that punk stuff. I love, I love, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I just love all the main bands. You're very well liked, but Alan, does that that must help in industry though? What's that? Sorry? You're very well liked, right? You're very well respected, right? Uh, so if you're try to open doors for people, then yeah, people will give you that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I get on alright with people. You know, I mean, you know, like, luckily I've not pissed too many people. Yeah, but I've got, there's a few people out there, James. It's not that hard to find. <laughs> I still <have> time. <laughs> I'm actually related to most of them <laughs> because your management skills, though, yeah. they must be, they must be second to none. Even though you might not think it, yeah, the, you must have something to yeah. to have created all those yeah. bands, to created hundreds and millions of albums yeah. sold. I know when shut the fuck up. Yeah, you know what I mean, you know, a lot of people don't know where to shut the. Fuck I don't. Up. I don't. You can be sitting here all day. <laughs> half, half it, it's that. Half it's just shut, shut up at the right point and listen. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Have you got a lot of family back in Glasgow? Yeah, I've got a few. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've got sisters and everything. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. Well, my sister Susan watches you. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I love that because I messaged you and you were actually going to message yeah, me. Yeah, I was. I was. Well, that was great because I was watched. I watched the Paul Ferris one, the Joe Steele one. I watched Kyle the for the View one. Uh, I watched. I think I watched another one, and I thought I, I I should contact James. I nearly done it before I went to Australia. Then I was in Sydney Harbour, walking around in a day off at Sydney Harbour, and it was like, Alan, I've run a podcast, and I came back immediately. I went, I know, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Hi, Steph, Alan McGee's been watching your podcast, <laughs> and then we've come down to London, and and yeah. here we are. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I've got questions. All right, mate. For the fans, we've got three questions. We've got one from. Sean Bryce, your best, I think I've actually stole the guy's fucking question. The best debut album from any band you signed? Probably Oasis. Definitely, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let me just think. No, it's got to be that one as a debut. Yeah. I, I think it's the best album anyway. Mm -hmm. Great album. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you still listen to that stuff? Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, occasionally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it bring back a lot of emotions when you hear it? No, and... only good ones. Do you know what I mean? You know, I, I was like a happy time ultimately, you know what I mean? What about like Wonderwall when they were writing that? Do you see when you listen to that for the well, first I time? Heard you know? it, I heard the very first time I ever heard that, James, was a uh, was you know, before it was just getting mixed, they'd they recorded it with Owen Morris and I, I got it and it it was like, Oh, this is amazing. Do you know what I mean? This is gonna blow up, blow up. You know, I mean because it, it was really commercial and like, we're gonna have it away. Mm -hmm. You know, but I didn't, didn't hear it before that. That's crazy. Um we've got another question from Graham Bell. Was there a band you could have signed but never, only for them to become massive under an R label? Well, you like this, James. It's like it's like a, I was watching Chelsea, Crystal Palace, uh, with my pal Russell Warby, and uh, and he goes to me. It's about nineteen ninety eight, and he goes to me. You know, Dave could all really likes you, and I went, "All oh, right, I like him, right?" And he went, he, he goes, he goes, he, he goes, he'd love to bring the Foo Fighters off EMI and onto Creation. And I secretly thought they're not cool enough, right? So I went, I'm not interested, and I should have done it. Do you know what I mean? Because I was so obsessed in the nineties with being fucking cool, and it's like I should have just went. They're going to because it was it was it was kind of not that difficult to think they might become fucking massive, mm -hmm. and they did, and they did. Do you know what I mean? So I should have signed them. <laughs> we'll have regrets sometimes, don't That's we? One of them. Uh, we've got another question from Reese Mullen. What do you think of the music industry today, particularly rock and indie, and its future? How do you see it? I think musically the rock and indie thing's going through a slight resurgence now. You know, I think it's starting to re-establish itself. It'll probably in the next few years a few bands will break out of that. But I think the music industry's changed so much. It's a digital music business now. Do you know what I mean? Look at this show here now. You get two cameras, one guy mm -hmm. doing it. You know, it's, it's just it's mm -hmm. it, compact's the word for the music industry now, isn't it? Yeah. You but you've got there's a, there's more opportunities though. I think so. for people yeah. and yeah. There's more opportunities and more platforms to get yourself out there, to get your music. You know, yeah. you don't necessarily yeah. <coughs> necessarily need to have a manager now. A lot of people yeah. are doing their stuff online where they're getting millions and millions of hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Do you know how to work the social media kind of stuff you well, get used I mean, to? I'm not brilliant at it, but I mean I mean I'm probably I'm probably better than it than I think. I mean, I've got about forty two thousand people follow me mm -hmm. on Instagram. So I probably do know what I'm doing, but I don't think I do. Do you get a lot of a lot of Oasis questions all the time. No, I just get lots of mad people going, listen to this music. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right. Do you get embarrassed or do you get kind of, because my show's kicking off, it's, 
no is as big as I want it to be but I yeah. know how well when people stop me in the street and I get embarrassed and I see dick things like your show's doing great and I go oh, I can't know I feel like I get embarrassed because yeah. I get embarrassed but that's just that's, that's just a kind of thing about people ourselves that have been through drug addiction and all that mm -hmm. stuff that we're no good at taking you're doing good mm -hmm. and like because yeah, 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 yeah. I don't I don't take compliments particularly well do you know what I mean because because I've probably deep down don't have a huge self esteem so when somebody goes you're you're, you mean you're going, oh, you've done whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. nobody really, you know, most people don't really like it. Because when you were on your drugs and you were signing these bands, yeah. when you signed Oasis, did you ever feel, I feel like sometimes I don't deserve it, sometimes what I'm doing through homelessness yeah. or suicide or... I was amazed to that. Show. I was actually more of, I don't, I didn't think I don't deserve it, I was more thinking, fuck, how did that happen? Do you know what I mean? Really? Mm -hmm. So I was like, fuck, I got that right. Because you don't really yeah. think you're going to do it. You, 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 you go along doing it and you do the right things, but you know it's a crapshoot. Was that a whirlwind? Yeah, I mean, the whole, but I mean, since I've come to London, it's been a whirlwind, but it's been the best move I've ever made. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Clearly. I mean, I love London. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it might be unpopular to say it in your show, but I do love London. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I love London. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah, it's great. It's yeah. just the people, it's not like Glasgow people. It's a bit people. expensive at the moment. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I don't think it's getting cheaper anytime <laughs> soon. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. We, we drove down here and it's. Yeah. But again, this is a, this is a hustle and a grind. You've been there. You've done it. You've yeah, got yeah, to tell yeah. the tale. And well, you know, when you were saying that to me, James, you were saying, "Oh, it's a, it's a, you know, it's hustle." And is it? See, I'd, in a way, I block it out. I just mm -hmm. do my thing, so mm -hmm. I don't really know. Do you know what I mean? Action speak louder than words. Yeah, it's just casually doing yeah. it because I know you're doing a lot of Q and A's now. Yeah, Have yeah. You yeah. one book for Glasgow? Anything yeah, for Glasgow? It looks, I think it's, I think it's the eleventh of April. Because people, yeah, yeah. When I, obviously when I said that you were yeah. coming on the show, everybody's jumped on the bandwagon asking their yeah, questions yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're buzzing for it, but you're doing a lot of Q&As now in the UK, yeah, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, how that came about, James, was I did, uh, I did one at the British Music Explosion last year in Liverpool, and I got put up in line, and from that I got offered Helensborough and Irvine, which I do a couple of weeks' time, and I put them uh, up the posters, up the one sale sort of thing, and then suddenly a guy went, oh, I'll be your agent. And went, all right, see what you can do, and then he's booked thirty-three shows. So suddenly, I've got a tour. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You enjoying that? Yeah, it's good. You know, I mean, I like being busy. To be absolutely mm -hmm. honest, you know what I mean. I like doing stuff. I love it. Yeah, yeah. And for coming on the show today, mate, is is great. And hey, no, to, it's good to yeah, give me your time. And yeah, don't be that. It's I'm, good. Man. I'm grateful, mate. I am yeah, truly really grateful you. and yeah. for telling your story, Alan. Yeah, it's been. Cheers. Uh, I really appreciate it. And yeah. you're doing great. We're so yeah. so bad at it and. and and all the best for the future. And Thank no you. doubt we'll be seeing much more of each other. So Brilliant. thanks a lot, mate. And I just want to give a shout out to my main sponsor, um, Collins Morgan. My boy Chris has just had a, a baby son. He's missy's him and he's missy. So congratulations. And also sponsored this show with Select Blinds. We'll have an advert at the end of this also. So take a wee check at that and hope you enjoy the show. But Alan, again, thank you, mate. Right, mate. It's been a pleasure. Be good, man. Please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and also click the notifications button so you are notified for when my next video goes on my channel. You can also catch me on Twitter at JamesEnglish0 or Instagram at JamesEnglish2 or Facebook at JamesEnglish11. You can also download these podcasts on Podbean or iTunes. I just want to say thank you to my sponsors, Fire Suppression Scotland and Select Blinds for also sponsoring this episode. For all your fire safety requirements, fire alarms, fire extinguishers, fire risk assessment, fire doors, and also CCTV, fire suppression have your safety as their main priority. For inquiries, you can contact them on 01698 200562 or email on info at firesuppressionscotland.org. At Select Blinds, if you want to find something unique, then Select Blinds is a place for you. They take pride in their ability to manufacture blinds to order, using a range of materials and fabrics. They can take your needs, specifications and instructions to use them to create blinds of any colour or style. If you're looking for something that you've seen in a catalogue, then they keep a range of popular blinds in stock, each of which can be modified and sized to fit your windows perfectly. Whatever they're looking for, an individual item or something that's off the shelf, Select Blinds will give you that ideal choice. When you make a purchase at Select Blinds, the delivery and fitting is also free of charge. So for inquiries for Select Blinds, give them a call on 01236 443 636 or drop them a message on Facebook page, Select Blinds and Shutters.
AM Events are specialists in party wedding and event planning management. They offer services from full event planning and management right down to the standalone venue dressing. AM Events strive for 100% customer satisfaction every time from email updates and how about the planning is going, managing the day of the event. They will support you the whole way through. So for more information to make a booking, pop down to their showroom at Unit 2, Foundry Street, Atlas Industrial Estate in Glasgow. Their phone number is 0141 237 3020. So pop along or else their social media pages are on Facebook, AM Events and also Instagram at amevents.glasgow.